Hello, you wonderful people. In today's video, I wanna share with you the best possible projects that you should be building as a beginner that could possibly get you hired. And maybe they're not the best ideas, but at least these are the projects that I'm building. And I wanna give you an idea of what I think are the important things. And hopefully it helps you to build your own project that will help you get hired or make progress on your development journey. So before I share with you the three steps that I take, three, that looks like four, eh, Three steps that I use to help me decide of what's a good project idea to build, as well as show you the project that I'm building, I wanna talk about the elephant in the room, which is being stuck in tutorial hell. Here's the thing, we all have to start somewhere. There's nothing wrong doing your first few tutorials and even putting the projects that you build from tutorials into your portfolio. But the one thing that the tutorials don't teach you is the most important skill that you should have as a software engineer, which is problem solving. A lot of times when you do these tutorials, you're working on a finished and polished project where there's not that many bugs, if any. And so when you follow the steps, you're just little following a prepared outline that that creator or that teacher has created for you. So after three to four, maybe five tutorials at most, like for instance, I learned HTML, I learned CSS, I learned JavaScript, and I learned about working with databases, you should wean yourself off tutorials because you are going to do yourself a huge disservice by continuing that route. I know for a fact that has stunted me in my personal development because I bet I could have got a job much sooner if I let go of constantly using tutorials as a crutch while learning to code. And you should definitely dive in head first to try to build your project from scratch. And I know it's daunting and terrible because I still feel just as daunting as terrible as I did when I built my first project from scratch, but it was the most important decision I made that helped me to continue to improve as a developer. So now let's take a look at three steps that I use to help me to figure out what I should build and what my idea should be. Number one, it should be something useful. It should be something that solves a pain point that you may have. For instance, I have a YouTube channel and I hate making descriptions for my YouTube videos. After I upload the video, I want to do the least amount of work, but I still have to write a description that makes sense for that video and add it in my YouTube channel. Wouldn't it be awesome if I had an app that would do that automatically? And that's exactly how I came up with this idea. It's something came from a use case that I was missing in my life. And if this is something that's useful for me, there might be other people that find it useful as well. So the idea you wanna build applications while thinking of a use case that could help somebody make their life a little bit better. Maybe you have a neighbor who walks dogs and she or he, she wants to, to have an easier time of booking appointments for her doggy walking business. And maybe you create an application that allows her clients to easily do that. So number one, you wanna think of building something useful. So let's quickly take a look at this application that I'm building. That will bring us to point number two, don't try to do too much. So here I have a very simple input, which expects a YouTube URL. So here, if I have a video from Web Dev Cody, I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to go to my application, paste it in and click generate. It's gonna go ahead and generate the description for the video with a small summary. And I realized while building this application that Actually, it'll be really nice to have a summary for videos before committing to watch them. And here you see, I have the summary for the video with some of the key topics that Web Dev Cody talked about, including the video description that I could then post to my YouTube channel with like an amazing title. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. This goes ahead and saves the description in my application and that you could see in my backend where I'm using Strapi Headless CMS because why recreate the wheel? You could see this saved information. I'll talk more in detail of how this application works in a little bit, but this brings us to our second point. For instance, looking at our application, somebody would like be like, wow, this is really cool. Like you could generate a description, but you know what would be even cooler if you had this ability and you had a search bar here that makes it very easily to search all the videos that you have. Or maybe if you had a chat chat icon here and when you click the chat icon you're able to talk to a chatbot which allows you to ask questions about the video that you watched and here's the issue with that i am adding scope creep, which means that I'm trying to add too many features to my application, which is actually going to make this much harder to build. And this brings us to point number two, keep your scope small. My original goal for this application was it needs to be able to take a link and generate a description for that video. 
So the initial goal, you want to create a proof of concept or a minimal viable product that you can show to your users and take from start to finish. By adding all these different features, number one, it's going to get overwhelming really quickly and you're not going to finish your project. I'm sure as I'm saying this, a lot of you have, because I know I do, a lot of unfinished projects that you thought were a good idea, but they quickly got out of the control and you never finished them. So keep this in mind. Work one feature at a time. Once that feature is done, deploy that project that somebody could use it for its intended purpose. For instance, if you shared that same pain point as I did, not wanting to write your own descriptions, I could send you my application that I have now in its current state and it's going to solve your problem as well. You could always come back to this project and add additional features, which I am going to continue working on them. But right now, what you have to make sure is you have to make sure that you scope things in small chunks that allow you to take your project from start to finish. So now this brings us to the third topic. You need to implement full CRUD functionality. Create, read, update, and delete. For instance, when I refresh this app, we see that we're loading existing data that's being read from a database, and then we're making a request to our API and we're returning this data. And you don't need to know the details of how to write that data to the database because I am actually cheating. To build this project, I am combining a couple of different services together. And and before I finish this topic, let me kind of show you what I'm doing. So I'm using Strapi, which is a headless CMS that allows you to create an API in minutes. And so if you take a look at my Strapi application where I have my data, able to create controllers that allow me to use in my application to get the data. So notice we have our create endpoint, find endpoint, update, delete, and find one. So I'm not creating this API from scratch, but I'm using existing technologies that exist to help me accomplish my goal. And as a beginner, you don't need to create your whole full stack application, just find technologies that help you to achieve your goals and stitch them together into a finished project like I'm doing here. So now let's take a look at this example inside the application to see full CRUD example. So C stands for create. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to generate a new description. When I'm generating the description, I'm actually making a post request to OpenAI API. So I'm getting that response that is showing me my summary. When I click the save the description, this is going to fire the create aspect of it. Now, once my data is saved to the database inside my Strapi instance, I have this access. The way I made this application, I could actually go ahead and update it. So you know what? I'm going to take this title, I'm gonna copy it from the bottom, and I'm gonna move it to the top. So this is the U of the CRUD update. When I click update, it's gonna go ahead and update my project and notice that now the title is on the top. And finally, the last part is the D, delete. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete. I'm gonna delete all of them so I no longer have any of my videos here. And if we take a look in our backend and refresh, notice all the videos are gone. So you don't have to create a backend API from scratch, but you do need to understand the concept of create, read, update, and delete, and how to accomplish that by consuming an API. And not only am I using Strapi to be able to store my data, I'm also using external API endpoints like OpenAI to be able to use the API to allow me to use ChatGPT to generate my description. So if we take a look in my code here, and again, we don't have to get too wild, don't worry about it. In my index file, I have a couple of different forms and you're going to see that I have generate description form. This generate description form is making a request to generate description service that I created. And if we take a look there under services, you have generate description. And what I'm doing is I am using OpenAI API and I'm interacting through it through Langchain, which is another library that makes interacting with OpenAPI much easier. And I'm doing all the magic here. But at the end of the day, what I'm doing is I'm making a request to OpenAI API and getting the data back. And that's where my description comes from. So to sum up, point number three, focus on creating apps that 
leverage consuming other APIs and make sure that you're adding full CRUD functionality because no matter what application you look at, there literally are glorified to-do apps. You need to be able to add data, delete data, update data, and see the data on the website. And so if you practice consuming other APIs, don't have to make the things from scratch like I showed. I'm using Strapi, our headless CMS, to create my API very easily. You're able to create full stack applications like I demonstrated here. So before we sum up what we talked about the last thing I want to mention quickly you might be at a different part of your journey maybe you're an expert 10x developer you look at this like you're like child's play who cares about this I don't really care this is too easy or you might be looking at this like oh my gosh I can't do this how do you start and you might feel like you need to take more tutorials and the answer is not more tutorials the answer is come up with your idea and identify what is that immediate thing that's getting you stuck maybe you're like I don't know where to start well my project you know has a little input with a button maybe that's where you start using html and css you're like let me create that input let me create that button and then you ask well how do you like, add a click event on that depending if you use a little javascript or using a framework like next.js or remix whatever it is and you just take it step by step and for instance i showed you how i interacted with OpenAI API, I used an additional library called LangChain. I spent hours reading through the documentation through trial and error, trying to figure things out. So it takes time and it's okay to suffer. But the most important part, what you need to force yourself to do is to make mistakes, get stuck, and instead of reaching to a tutorial, reaching to the documentation, a blog post, another video on YouTube, if you must, but try through trial and error to figure out and fix it. Before I got this functioning just the way I wanted, it broke uh, so many times and it was so frustrating, but that's part of being a programmer. It's suffering and trying to figure out the solution. And I guess that's what makes it fun. So finally, let's recap. Number one, pick something that is relatable or solves a pain point. Like in my case, I needed something to solve my problem of not wanting to manually summarize and create description for YouTube videos that I make. Number two, when you're building your application, you're gonna have so many ideas, but Norris, you need to have the most minimum viable product or proof of concept that you can if you want to make it even smaller with one feature that a user can use. Like I talked in the video, I could have added all these bajillion features, but what was the main feature of my app? Create that description for the YouTube video. That's the only thing I focused. Yeah, I could have added all these other things, but when you add too many things, it creates scope creep and it makes it very difficult to finish your project. Now I could just stop here today, not care in the world, and be happy because my project worked and it's intended feature and I could bring closer to it. And finally, number three, the days of creating just simple landing pages with HTML and CSS, I'm not saying that they're over, but in the bare minimum, we need to understand that majority of the websites, they use APIs and we need to be comfortable consuming APIs and being able to do the full CRUD functionality. I'm not saying you have to create the backend yourself from scratch, especially when you're starting out. I'm still a front-end developer, and this is why I don't spend too much time trying to do everything. I focus on using technologies that exist, like I showed you, Strapi, a headless CMS that allows you to set up your API in minutes, and I love it. I've been using it all the time to create cool things because I don't want to bug myself down, especially at this level of stopping myself from creating things that I could share with the world. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, you know, you could like, subscribe. If you totally think I'm completely crazy, you could talk crap in the comments. I don't care because I'm going to continue to do what I do, which is build silly projects, share them with you on YouTube and talk about my journey as uh, someone who transitioned into web development late in their 30s. So I got my first job at 39. I'm now 43. I'm loving it. And is it easy? No, it's not. I always think I'm going to get fired. I still have imposter syndrome, but I'm still so happy that I made this decision that I did. So if you ever have any questions, let them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.